Hi, so I am Gihan Morasinghe and I'm a senior lecturer in mathematics over here at the University of Exeter. And today I want to talk about something called inductive reasoning. So what is inductive reasoning? Inductive reasoning is a kind of reasoning method that I'm sure we all use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Inductive reasoning is simply about generalizing from specific examples. That's all it is. And I'm going to illustrate that with this little toy puzzle. It's called the Towers of Hanoi. So what is the puzzle? Well, we've got here five disks. And our goal is to move all of the disks from this peg here, peg number one, let's call it, to this peg here, peg number three. OK, so I could just pick them all up and move them down. And that would be that. And I've done it in one move. OK, but we're not allowed to do that. We've got some restrictions. We can only move one disk at a time. Right? And what I cannot do is put a larger disk on top of a smaller disk. So that is forbidden. So the question is, how many moves is it going to take to move all of the disks from peg one to peg three? And of course, I could just really uh, take my time sort of moving the disks over here, moving them back, and that's wasted effort. But the question is really, what's the smallest number of moves that I need to take? And you know, this is a difficult puzzle if you, if you try to do it with five disks. But let's think about what would happen if I did it with a smaller number of disks. And if I just had one disk here, this one yellow disk, then to move it from peg one to peg three, well, that takes just one move, doesn't it? OK, so that's one move. What if I have two disks? How many moves is that going to take? Uh, well, let's think. Uh, the simplest way to do it is to move the smallest disk to the middle peg, this green disk to peg number three, and to move the smallest disk on top of that. So that's taken me three moves. What if I had three disks? Now, this is where the inductive reasoning comes into play. So what we're going to be doing, instead of thinking about the problem of three disks, I'm going to think about this easier problem, the problem of two disks. All right, now, how many moves does it take uh, to move these uppermost two disks to the middle peg? Well, it's the same problem as moving the uppermost two disks to the third peg. So that's going to take three moves. Right? So one, two, three. And then what I'll do is I'll move this third disk to the third peg. And now it's the same problem again of moving these two disks to that final peg. We know that's going to take three moves, right? One, two, three. So what we've done is we've reduced the problem of three disks to the problem of two disks. Right? This is the heart of inductive reasoning. So it's taken me how many moves? It's taken, uh, well, it's, there's, a, there's one move, or let's say, yeah, one move to move this uh, this disk to that third peg, and then two lots of uh, three, because two lots of three is the number of moves we needed to move the two disks to this peg two times. So that's taken uh, seven moves in total. Now what about the problem of four disks? OK, well, we know, we've just proved it, that it takes three uh, sorry, seven moves to move these three disks to another peg. So that's going to take seven moves. It's going to take one move to move that disk to that peg. And then it's going to take another seven moves to move those three disks to that peg. I mean, I've done it as though it's just one move, but we know that I can break down this one move into seven moves. OK, so in total, that's going to be how many moves? It's going to be 15, because I've got 7 times 2 plus 1 is 15. And this method of inductive reasoning enables us to solve the problem of five disks. So we know it's going to take how many moves? 15 moves to move those four disks to that peg, one move to, take, to move that disk to that peg, and another 15 moves to move those four disks to that peg. So it's 15 times 2 plus 1, which is 31. So that's solved the Tower of Hanoi problem.
But the more interesting problem is, what if we had n disks? How many moves would it take to move n disks from one peg to another? So let's, uh, let's do it on the board. And I'm going to write h of n for the number of moves it takes to move n disks from peg 1 to peg 3. So what we've seen, of course, is that h1 is 1. It takes one move to move uh, one disk from what peg 1 to peg 3. And the observation we made was that to move uh, n disks from peg 1 to peg 3, it takes the same number of moves as moving n minus 1 disks two times plus 1. So the plus 1 is for moving the biggest disk, and the uh, 2 times n minus 1 is for moving that stack of n minus 1 disks. OK, and we, we also made some observations. So if n is 1, it takes one move. Uh, if n is 2, it takes three moves. If n is 3, it takes seven moves. 4 is 15 moves. And 5 was 31 moves. Now the question is, can we see a pattern there? Is there a pattern that arises when we look at 1, 3, 7, 15, and 31? Well, if you're familiar with your powers of 2, you'll notice that each of these is 1 less than the power of 2. Because 1 is 2 minus 1, 3 is 4 minus 1, that's 2 squared, 7 is uh, 2 cubed minus 1, 15 is 2 to the 4 minus 1, and 32 is 2 to the 5 minus 1. So we'll guess that h of n is 2 to the n minus 1. So we're going to prove this guess using inductive reasoning. What we'll do is we'll observe that it certainly works, this guess, when n is 1. We've seen that because it's 2 to the 1 minus 1. And the way inductive reasoning works is we'll assume that the formula holds for a particular n and we'll then prove that if it holds for a particular n, it must hold for the next n. That's sort of like a domino principle. If we can knock over uh, domino n, and we know that knocking over domino n implies we can knock over domino n plus 1, then we know we can knock over all the dominoes. OK, so let's look at our formula again. h of n is 2 to the n minus 1. So we've assumed that this formula holds for a particular n, and we're going to prove that it must hold for the next n. So what is h of n plus 1? Question mark. So by our observation, we know that this must be twice h of n plus 1. That's what we saw when we were looking at the Towers of Hanoi. And we've assumed that h of n is 2 to the n minus 1. So this is 2 times 2 to the n minus 1 plus 1. If we rearrange this, we'll get 2 to the two n plus 1 minus 2 plus 1 and that is 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. So what we've seen is that the formula has the right shape. So h of n plus 1 is 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1, and that's the right shape of formula that we assumed when we looked at h of n being 2 to the n minus 1. So given that we've uh, proved the formula for h of n plus 1 from the formula of h of n, the method of inductive reasoning allows us to determine that this formula must hold for all whole numbers n. So where else can we use this method of inductive reasoning?
We can also use it when we're wanting to count divisions of a plane. So I'll take this piece of paper, undivided so far. So it's one whole undivided plane. And now what I'll do is I'll draw a line through the piece of paper. So drawing one line through the piece of paper has divided that plane into two regions. Yep. And the question is this, if I draw n lines into how many regions can I divide the plane? So if I draw two lines, I've divided the plane into one, two, three, four regions. If I draw three lines, I've divided the plane into, well, now it's hard to count, isn't it? This is, this is going to tax our counting skills. Can you count how many there are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven regions. Okay, and what if I divide the plane into more regions by drawing one more line? So we'll draw a line like this. How many regions are there now? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven regions. And you can see this is going to get even you know, more and more complicated the more lines I draw. So can we think of a formula for the number of regions that we'll get the more lines we draw? Okay, let's let's start again. And see what happens. Okay. So one undivided plane uh, and uh, with no lines and that's one region. So I'm going to maybe write over here the number of regions based on the number of lines. So r of 0 is going to be 1. If I have one line, I've got two regions. If I have two lines, I've got four regions. OK, now with three lines, the, the three lines is really going to be what will, what will illustrate what's happening here. Let's look at the third line here, this line here. So it, it intersects with the previous two lines in exactly two points, this third line here. And what it does is that for each, each of the previous regions, I've got two new regions. Right? So uh, I've got a region one here, and then I've got another region, let's call it one dashed here. I've got a region two here, and a region two dashed here, a region three here, and a region three dashed here. And I've got this other region four here. So what I've done is I've added how many regions? I've added another three regions to the number of regions that previously existed. So that's seven regions. And why is it seven? Because it's four plus three is seven. So now we can reason that r of four must be seven plus four, which is 11. And if you recall, that's exactly what we had previously. So this gives us uh, a kind of way to count the number of regions. So R of n is going to be n plus R of n minus 1. And we know that R of 0 is 1. So R of n is going to be n plus n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus 2 plus 1 plus r of 0. So that's n minus n, sorry, plus n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. So that's a nice formula for the number of regions. And you can go further and re-express this formula if, you, if you've seen an expression for this formula as a half times n times n plus 1 plus 1. So now I know that if I had, for example, 10 regions, what is r of 10 going to be? Well, it's 10 times 11 divided by 2. So that's 55 plus 1 is 56. I can, I can figure that out without having to draw any of the lines or count any of the regions. 
Okay, so I hope that's shown you the power of inductive reasoning for proving things in mathematics. Thank you.